Good morning YouTube. Here we are again at the flying field. Now today I'm going to look at how I do the panoramic photographs using the pano setting in Litchi. It's very easy. Um, it looks more complicated than it is. Okay, first of all, how do you set it up? Well, you click on FVP on the top left hand corner and look along, you'll see all the different modes and one of them is pano so we click on pano and there we are now that looks pretty weird there's nothing changed much but in the bottom left hand corner just above the little arrow icon you'll see a new new button click on that one and up come our panoramic settings now this is where you choose basically how many photographs you're going to take um, you choose how many rows and how many um, photos per row. Now I always go for eight rows and ten photos per row which of course is going to give me 80 photos. Um, the top row angle I usually use at about plus between 15 and 20 percent that looks slightly up. You can always discard the photographs you don't want. Now if we scroll down a little bit width 180 degrees I find that's about right. Nadir's I have no idea what that is. Capture strategy capture strategy I prefer row by row that means it starts always starts on the left hand side and works its way across to the right and when it's turned 180 degrees taking all the photographs it'll lower the camera and then work its way back to the left so you end up working in rows and I find that easier to display in um, a photo browser when you get back home uh, wait time after each photo I always set it to zero the camera seems to find its own way it takes its photographs and it moves on. So that's it, we're ready to go. The only thing is, before you fly, or before you start using this, you must have the right hand switch on your remote control in the most downward position. So you go through ATTI mode and into FGPS, as you can see at the top of the screen. That's with the switch all the way up, PGPS, ATI, or ATTI, attitude mode, and the bottom position is FGPS and now all your automatic functions will work okay so let's take off and see what happens zero feet altitude 92 percent battery I'm going to climb out to about 100 foot 200 foot something like that now this is the area you can see in front, let's get rid of that for a sec. Right, you can see the area in front of the, you can see the area in front of the drone there, that's the area I intend to take photographs of, 200 foot should be adequate for that. So there we are, 200 and a bit foot. Now if we look across to the left, altitude, 91% battery. That's approximately where we're going to start taking photographs, somewhere around about there. And then if we come back through 180 degrees, we can look almost directly into the sun by the look of it, which isn't a good idea, but there we are, can't be helped. So we'll turn back to the beginning. The little yellow square you can see, the lower part of the screen, that's um, where the uh, camera is looking to work out exposure. You can move it by tapping the screen. If I touch on the blue sky, it moves the yellow square up there and will then expose for the sky. But as you can see, that's darkened the whole picture. So I always, and down the bottom there, somewhere on the area I want to photograph. Right, I think we're about ready to go now right hand switch is all the way towards me in FGPS mode I'm in pano mode and then I start and it's moving the camera and it'll start taking photographs as you can hear. 201 feet altitude 87 percent battery now this can take some time Obviously, it's got to position itself for 80 photographs and move 80. 200 feet altitude, 86% battery. And reposition itself every 
a few, few seconds 80 times. Um, so I'll probably speed this up when we get to editing. Oh, I can see my props. Look at that. Again, as I said earlier, you can dispose. You don't have to use all the photographs it takes. And obviously you can, there is editing that we will be doing later on the computer. So right, I'm going to let that carry on. I will speed this up when we, when I get in on the computer and edit the video. Because this can be extremely boring waiting for us. It takes a little while. 202 feet altitude. Usually, the, battery. the photographs, each photograph is pretty good on its own, but joining them together makes it very impressive. Right, I'm going to speed this up now. I'll speak to you in a few minutes. Right, that's the end of the panorama. Now we'll go back home and we will plug into the computer and carry on with the easy stuff. It's not cold in like it is out here. 204 feet altitude. Well, that's better. We're back indoors now in the warm. It was a bit chilly up the field there. And now we're going to show you how to use, um, how I use, Image Composite Editor, which is a free download from Microsoft. Uh, you can search that on Google or whatever. I'm going to make certain assumptions. I'm going to assume you knew, you know how to move photographs and files around on your computer between folders. If you don't, I'm sure you'll be able to find a nice um, tutorial on YouTube for that. There are lots out there. I'm not going to go into that now. Okay, so right, here we go. I've fired up ICE or Image Composite Editor, and we're going to start making some really rather exciting photographs. First thing we do... We're making a new panorama from images and we need to go across to where we've put our images now i've got them on mine and uh, documents phantom videos pano tutorial photos and there's all the photographs we've just taken up the field earlier on there's 80 of them there as you can see now you don't need to use all of these you can select um, I find it's best to start off using all of them and then delete the ones you don't want uh, to, to crop the picture and you end up with a bigger picture, megapixel wise, higher definition picture by using fewer photographs. So anyway, to import them, click on the top and the usual shift and click on the bottom and then click open. Now this takes a little while to import them. There we go. There's all the photographs. 
and now we go across to stitch click on stitch this bit can take a little while so I'll probably speed this bit up um, as I did with the flying it can take a few minutes to import them. there's a lot of photographs there in this case is 80 pictures um, obviously the fewer you use the faster this part is Right, there we go um, as I say I've sped that bit up because that took just over nine minutes to import those pictures into this bit now here we are we've got some strange looking images now on the right hand side here uh, you've got several different um, options cylindrical transverse cylindrical all of those of them now what I do I have no idea what any of them mean really so I just work my way down and see which looks good um, and you can move things around um, it can make some strange effects, it really can. Um, I tend to go for a more natural look, so I try and keep at least some part of the picture looking natural. You're not going to get it perfectly natural because it's a round image trying to be put onto a flat uh, screen, of course, much like making a, a map of any map. But, oh, that looks quite good. I quite like that, apart from this big hole in the sky. But then we could crop that down. Um, we can move it around again. This one doesn't uh, actually bend the horizon, but you can move around and get things more centralized. And that, by the way, that's my flying field that I fly, and I'm very lucky. I'm just about the only person who uses it, apart from the occasional dog walker. And, ooh, uh, that's a bit weird. So if you get lost and you can't find your way back to the original orientation, just click on orientation, auto orientation here, and it puts it back somewhere near right now. That doesn't look too bad to me. Um, the road is curved, which it isn't in reality, but the horizon is slightly curved. You could tell the flat earthers that proves that. Uh, there you go. Look, look, flat earthers. It doesn't look very flat, flat to me, but there we are. That's uh, another story, isn't it? You can straighten up the horizon. Um, try another mode. Oh, that looks quite good. The road's relatively straight, um, and the horizon's really relatively straight. Yeah, I think that's probably the one to go with. Something like that. I think that's quite a nice photograph, that. Um, but they, again, there are lots more things you can do. I, I wanted to get the trading estate in here, so we can tip that up, you see. Move it across a bit more. Across. Bring the trading estate into the centre of the frame. And correct that up like that and there we go now that looks pretty good doesn't it we've got the nice straight horizon the road here which is a road that goes past my flying field and um, the trading estate in the middle we can zoom in if we wish it's surprising how far you can zoom in when you want to right the next stage is to crop this picture to make a nice frame so crop and this again is a section that can take a little while so I may speed this up in the um, final edit. Right, there we go. Let's have a look at our finished picture. What a strange looking picture. However, all this on the right hand side, we don't really need that. Um, obviously, if you had taken, if we'd taken more photographs, if we'd done for 360 degrees instead of 180, we would have had this effect over this side as well so that would have made quite a an interesting photograph but as I say I like to go for the more natural look so we'll zoom out a bit and we'll crop this down something like that by just moving these highlight lines tidy it up there we go now I'd like the trading estate to be right in the middle of the picture so we'll crop across like that there we are now that's going to be our final photograph so we export and that's taking care of all the crop and everything now if we zoom in you can see there's still quite a lot of detail in it which isn't surprising it's a 31.6 megapixel photograph and 
as you as you saw, it's only a small part of what could have been huge. Um, and I'm quite pleased with that, so I'm going to save that. So we export to disk in the normal fashion, and we'll call that. Let's get really imaginative. P A N O one. That took me a lot to think that up. And that's it, done. We've now saved the photograph, everything's done, ready to send it off to all our friends, and they will be amazed, I'm sure. Practice with it, play with it, and you will find this all, it's the, it's a limitless piece of software, it's incredible, it's really brilliant. Uh, there's so many different effects you can get, the, the photographs, just by uh, changing the viewpoint, changing the... Um, how many photographs you use because you don't have to use all your photographs if at any time you want to go back and start again just click on import and go back and there's all your photographs already waiting for you and you can delete those or at least remove them from this process uh, just by clicking on them and remove selected or you can shift and click the usual thing remove selected and start the process again it's all very straightforward it's all good fun all right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found something in this that was useful. Bye-bye for now. Have a good afternoon or evening or morning or whatever it is, wherever you are. <laughs>